Coming up, New Jersey underwater. The neighborhood's cleaning up and drying out after some intense flooding. Dry for many, but tracking the chance for a few showers as early as tonight. And food meets art in a unique way. New York Live is here with how this hungry artist is shining a light on local businesses. Hey, what's up? I'm Kay Ingram, and this is News For Now for Friday, April 8th. Now, taking a stroll today, you might be surprised to learn that the cleanup from last night's storms are going on well through the weekend. That's because there are some areas that were hit seriously hard and inundated by all that wet weather. Chopper Ford gave us a look at some of the flooding in Rochelle Park in New Milford near the Hackensack River. Entire streets are filled with water. At least 10 people had to be rescued in River Edge. People we spoke to say all of this came as a surprise this morning. I was like, it's not going to be that bad because they, they would have told us. I feel very fortunate that I live the other side of the river, so I only have to watch this and, you know, have feelings for the people that they live here. Flooding's also causing problems in other parts of our area. In Westchester, several sections of the Bronx River Parkway are closed in both directions, and it looks like more rain is on the way. Hi there, I'm Storm Team 4 meteorologist Maria La Rosa. I hate to be talking about more rainfall, but there is that potential, especially later on in the evening and into tomorrow morning, where we could see a few more spotty showers this after a pretty nice day. You can see with the hour by hour forecast by 11 o'clock midnight, a few spotty showers. This is with another area of low pressure that'll rotate on through and that keeps the chance for some showers, not only tomorrow morning, but plan on it for much of the day. Not a washout, but you may encounter those showers from time to time. Definitely had some Crazy conditions today too out of the west anywhere from 10 to 15 miles per hour through the evening hours. They ease up a little bit by tomorrow morning, but we see that shift to the south and that'll allow temperatures to rebound a little bit after a cool start. And speaking of cool down to 46 in the city, 43 the low in White Plains and Bridgeport mid to low 40s here for Long Island down the shore. A few 30s higher elevations to the north and west in the Hudson Valley. All right, also new today, shoppers are back at the American Dream Mall. That's after reports that a lone gunman fired off shots. Police say gunshots erupted in a parking lot just before 6 Thursday evening, sparking chaos as shoppers rushed to get out of the East Rutherford Mall. One man was shot and rushed to the hospital. The mall was immediately locked down. Some workers and shoppers were stuck inside the mall for hours while officers evacuated it. So far, no arrests have been made. Up next, a shocking crime as four men are accused of trying to swap drugs for missiles. Those four men are now charged, accused of trying to get American made missiles to armed ethnic groups in Burma. In exchange for huge amounts of meth and heroin, they plan to distribute in New York. Court documents show a Japanese citizen was the ringleader of the organization and had been under investigation since 2019. Convictions could send the suspects to prison for life. All right, up next, our restaurants have had it really bad for the last couple of years, and that is just one thing we hate to see, especially here in New York City. Well, that's why we're going to turn it over to Onika, who caught up with one illustrator who's making a big difference at his favorite eateries, one illustration at a time. Check it out. If you're a fan of food and art, get excited because our next guest is bringing these two worlds together in a truly unique way. Hi, Justin. So you are known as the hungry artist here in New York City, but I feel like you're giving the term starving artist a whole new meaning. For the uninitiated, what is it that you do exactly? Yeah, so I use my food illustrations to spotlight local businesses across New York City, and I also fundraise with it. So 20% of proceeds from my website art go to New York City Restaurant Relief. I love it. Tell me, how does a kid from Queens get into food illustration? Well, I've always loved art, and coming from Queens, it's really a melting pot, so I've always loved food. And it just kind of made sense. During the pandemic, I got really inspired to share my art and just been eating different foods and got inspired to share it through my artwork. So I got to shout out your Instagram page because it makes me so hungry. Through your page, we get to find out about foods and different venues that we otherwise wouldn't have known existed. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm exploring the city all the time and I just love finding out about new foods. I'm, I feel like I'm learning with everybody else as I share on social media and just doing it through a creative manner, through my artwork. Um, I love it very much. Well, speaking of which, we are actually at Spongy's. You've brought us here. Tell us about this particular venue. 
Yeah, so first off, we're at 121 Baxter. And um, Spongy's Cafe is owned by Fernando. He's a Mexican-born baker. He's been doing it for about 30 years now, and he makes authentic Hong Kong-style sponge cake. These look fantastic, first of all, and you've actually immortalized these in your art. Yeah, so these are the original sponge cakes, and these are black sesame and green tea. And they were just so good when I tried them that I, I had to draw them. I love that. That is so cool. Really bringing food and people together, and I guess that's the whole point, right? Yeah, to spread joy through food, and food has done so much for me. Um, local business owners work so hard, and I, it's just a way to hopefully make them smile. Well, Justin, thank you so much for everything you're doing. Happy eating. Yeah, you too. And drawing. Thank you. <laughs> hey, want to make a quick buck? What if I told you all you had to do was take some video of these? All right, well, not quite because this truck is not idling, but if it were, all you would have to do is take a video. News Force Andrew Siff is here to explain how some idol warriors are helping to clean up New York. An idling engine sounds to certain New Yorkers like payday. I really wasn't even thinking about the money that I was making. That's Donald Blair. He went after idling trucks and buses in Brooklyn and got paid. 55000 Another $70,000 on the way from the city's haul of $2.3 million in idling fines. Quarter of that, more than 700000 goes to citizens. If you want to change someone's behavior, the best way to do it is to hit them in the pocket. Hitting them through the rules of a 2019 city law called the Citizens Air Complaint Program. Here's how it works. Find a commercial vehicle that's idling, record video for three minutes in most neighborhoods or one minute in a school zone, then upload it to the city's Department of Environmental Protection. The vehicle owner can be fined $350 or more. The citizen calling it in gets $87.50 or one quarter of each fine. What's the rationale for you, the citizen, getting some of that money? It's work. George Packenham is another watchdog in the group, calling themselves the Idol Warriors. About 60 New Yorkers involved. Packenham netted 40,000 bucks so far. He's a former banker who refocused after his brother died of lung cancer and after the Iraq war didn't trigger energy independence. These two things compelled me to ponder a, uh, a direction. Make a statement. And while he thinks the city's new law made a difference. And for years I'd come out and there'd be an idling bus just like this. But I can tell you with assurance that in the past year, two years, it stopped. Somebody got the message. They paid the fine and they changed behavior. He's upset about the many vehicle owners who don't pay the fine. Almost $8 million in, in default payment not paid on idling tickets alone. I mean, what sort of system allows for that to happen? An I-Team review of the city's 311 data revealed Amazon remains the leader in unpaid fines, a quarter of a million dollars owed. UPS next at $70,000, FedEx at $60,000. This is outrageous. The city controller suggesting tougher enforcement. So it's not only a question of like, is that FedEx truck idling? Um, but if the FedEx fleet is idling, then we start impounding FedEx vehicles until they pay their tickets. FedEx told the I-Team we always strive to comply and emphasize they're transitioning to an electric fleet by 2040. A UPS spokesperson said our policy is to comply with the law and will work with the city to resolve. And Amazon said we are working with representatives of the city to resolve the outstanding fines. And the Department of Environmental Protection stressed the success. From 5,000 idling tickets issued in 2019, to 11,300 last year. It works because the citizens are getting rewarded for their efforts. Samara Swanston wrote the anti-idling law because air pollution for her is deeply personal. I lost my, my first husband and I lost my daughter to uh, asthma attacks. For Swanston, the sound of an engine rumbling isn't revenue, it's justice for family members she believes would be alive today if the air were cleaner. I think they'd be happy that we were doing the right thing for New York City because they both died in New York City and we can do better in New York City. Andrew Siff, News 4 New York. All right, friends, that's it for today's show. Thanks for checking in. Be sure to tune back next week on News 4 Now. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>